a Barnett Newman quote for John. Quote, instead of an eloquence that means what it says, that gives life to mud, one is left, no matter what the magic and techniques, with so much mud. Walter Hopps remembers Duchamp using the, quote, old French expression, dumb as a painter. Aborigine art on Melville Island, trapezoids, stripes, dots, moon, radiate, symbol of light, baskets, clubs, spears, burial poles. Last visit to Australia, best painting he saw was by Aborigine women. John's support of women at BU kept in touch with Iranian artists until he felt they were ready, could raise the money to bring them over. John produced no clones. He bought student work, and so did I. We fought over pieces. I had to sneak around to get there first and spend my fistful of cash. Matisse said, I used to say to my students, you must cut out your tongue because your decision has taken away from you the right to express yourself with anything but a brush. To paint the big dumb paintings that have no tongue with which to speak. John's mane, trees, moon, rocks, water, seaweed, tidal flats, no figures. From where he stands, under trees, an inlet before him, he sees rocks and out to water. From house sees water in all its rough glitter and smooth skin. Matisse and Walker, kelp forms, sea vegetation. Why doesn't someone commission John to paint a dining room. At his Nodler show, thinking of Matisse, quote, to imbue a square with feeling. Return to Goya, Rembrandt, and Velazquez. To students, quote, draw what you see. Don't draw it if you don't see it. I'm only intelligent when I draw. You find the form in drawing. First winter in, in New York City, 1973. Drew all the time as a way of explaining the drawing to myself, a way of moving. Mud of the Somme and Passchendaele, where his father served in World War I deepen him, responds to it in Maine. There is always a new book on the Somme in his studio and house, drawings on studio walls and floors like compost. Before John came to America, he heard from the painters Jake Berteau and Harvey Quaitman, who working as museum guards at the Jewish Museum had seen and liked John's work in an international show there enough to write him an encouraging letter. They invited him to New York City on nothing but their goodwill and feel for his work. After John met them when he arrived on a Harkness Fellowship, Jake and Harvey became lifelong friends. John lived in Soho and made friends as he had hoped to the sort of company he had dreamed of, but not found in Birmingham and London. John became friends with Joe Finelli, owner of Finelli's, and of the artist Ross Blechner, who babysat for his children. Betty Parsons introduced him to Maine, a cabin on a hillside besides a river, 
where he fished in the morning and painted in the afternoons, attempting to paint Maine, an effort to be rewarded years later when he got beyond the picturesque. Birmingham, London, Paris, Manhattan, Australia, Maine Coast, on the Hudson, upstate, Boston University, in the Peter Fuller Cadillac Olds Building, where John worked in his studio as he expected students to work in theirs. I never taught with anyone so generous and honest, so free of fear that rules universities, even as he was pissed off by stupid politics that emphasizes careerism over becoming an artist. He expected his colleagues to care enough about what he and the students were up to, to make it their business to visit and look. Some did, and some did not. I loved working with him, saying what I, a poet who loved painting, could get away with saying. Loved the gossipy hours over wine after crits with the painters. Talk for five or six hours, unwinding. Talk about Thatcher driving the English painters out of England. More laughter than yakety yak. He never dominated. You could argue with him. Even I could. You dumb fuck, it's called football. He and Dushko Petrovich howled with laughter after I offered some ill-informed, pretentious words about Man U. Second semester assignment. Poet, painter, book collaboration. To have the artists active in a world not their own. Broad definition of book bound or presented in stone, metal, wood, as scrolls. John found cash for prizes, display in library, an evening to celebrate the poets and artists, high spirits of the collaboration, poets from BU and outside. John loves facts, likes knowing that mint chip is the nation's favorite ice cream reads the paper, watches TV, and is perplexed by the country that once eagerly accepted immigrants and artists. Paintings full of these feelings, but nowhere a message. The feeling, the meaning, if that word works for you, is in the paint. Trevor Wingfield has remarked on John's love of the medium. Athleticism of drawing and painting. Intelligence like hitting a pitched baseball. Ted Williams looking at his swing in a full-length hotel mirror. The draftsman who is, whose intelligence is in the act, not rehearsed, thought through, and achieved. You give yourself the freedom to go where the pencil, charcoal, oil stick, the guitar, piano, and saxophone take you. Big, dumb painting. Cezanne's card players in the barns. The subject is concentration, the intensity of which causes your companion to snap their fingers in front of your face or nudge the penny from your thoughts, and usually you have no thoughts. The blue greatcoat worn by the player on the right is rugged, like a rock wall, heroic. What game are they playing? Frank Stella. It's like handwriting, Stella said. Gestural painting, de Kooning. And I found I just didn't have anything to say in these terms. Walker does. Drawing is handwriting, love of paint, Stella. To keep painting as good as it was in the can, John wants his paint worked to be not passive but active. 
you draw on the paint. Painting and drawing, one. Tom waits on Keith Richard in the studio, tuning up. No one knows it's music yet. That's where it's interesting. Orature, Fred Moten's UC Berkeley's Roy Thomas's word for Aborigine stories. Art that speaks, sings. Quote, my drawings are an arsenal of forms that I loved. Louise Bourgeois. John in his first Soho studio sat before his big drawings, tore them up, shuffled them into collages, smudged, scored, erased, built up marks and strokes with names to come. Large sheets surround images, paper, is drawing too, showed years later needing to arrive in their own sweet time and still unfinished. During that time, Walker liked showing these drawings to Jim Dine, whose eye for graphic work he respected. They appealed to Dine, and John thought them ready for the drawer. In John's studios, many studios, there are what the artist can't quite see today but will see in the future. When looking for who knows what, he sees what he now sees in a new way and is off to continue the exploration. The drawings begin. If you're going to draw, Walker insists, Seurat should always be on your mind. A sheet of Ang paper and the black of a Conte crayon. Seurat's friend Paul Signac wrote, in the course of Seurat's independent study, he noticed that in Rubens, as in Raphael, and in Michelangelo, as in Delacroix, line and chiaroscura and color and composition were subject to analogous laws, rhythm, proportion, and contrast. Seurat, drawing as light. Cigarette, waves, stairs, risers, ang. What is well drawn is well enough painted. James Salter. Gertrude Stein, when asked why she wrote, replied, for praise. Lorca said he wrote to be loved. Faulkner said a writer wrote for glory, the romance of writers. I have taught at Harvard, Brown, Wellesley, and MIT, at Gallatin, where most of the faculty and administration believes writing cannot be taught. I have taught at SUV, RISD, Syracuse, the California Art Institute, Mass College of Art, Ball State College, and Columbia University, where the faculty and administration believe that drawing can be taught. Drawing conclusions, Chekhov said, is up to the just. My only job is to be talented. John's father, John Henry Walker, served four years in World War I as a private, fought at the Somme and Passchendaele, where he was badly wounded and his torn up left shoulder left his arm useless. Recovering at Birmingham Hospital, he was nursed by May Summerfield, whose husband had been killed at the Somme. Having left school at nine, she worked as a charwoman, cleaning Woolworths, scrubbing floors on her hands and knees. End of the day, in her bag, thanks to bosses, ink, glue, crayons, pencils, art materials, quoting her son, nothing she didn't want to know about. Father, lathe worker, letter carrier, drove postal truck, Birmingham, the city 
of the Industrial Revolution where every needle and locomotive in Great Britain were manufactured. In the museum, trays of butterflies and constables learned fishing from older brothers who had served in war and for whom it was a release. John, I learned to sit and watch things. Can't remember not drawing. Mother, great encourager, takes family to Stratford, museums, reads aloud. By age seven, I had my own library ticket. That's where you found me if I wasn't fishing. At 10, entering grammar or secondary school, John convinces father I'd be a better mechanical draftsman if I go to art school. At 14, 15, grubby tech drawings made at Birmingham, symphony program and at home. No idea of art history. New Dutch still life, Rembrandt. Mother brought home Bibles from junk shops. 1956 to 60, Birmingham College of Art, beginning of blessed studentmanship. Bias of system was toward imagination. Teach yourself to look. This may have been based on one of Coleridge's principles for early education, to excite imaginative power. John certainly observed in Coleridge's words that little is taught by contest or dispute, everything by sympathy and love. But before the design course, you had to learn to draw, set students up in factories, ironworks, coal mines, give them something to look at, art all day, pub in the evening, Concerts at Town Hall, mixed with actors. Julie Christie was there. Applied to Royal College, Slate, Royal Academy. Huge shock rejected by all of them. First rejection. Head of Birmingham, Birmingham Department asked me what I was going to do. Bullshy little bugger that I was, I said, I'm going to paint. He gives me all the prizes for my graduating class, and they send me to Paris. They knew nothing. He takes a cigar from the block of cheap cigars he favors, lights up, scans his painting and drawing wall, or he looks out to see nothing about what was going on, nothing at all in America where I would arrive in 1973 on a Harkness Fellowship. Can of black paint, can of white. Moon through muzzy clouds, pinstripe elegance. Schwitters found his black and white in the papers. Red Rose Frankfurt's one pound, 26 cents. Beech nut spaghetti cans, 26 cents. Sunday pictorial, August 2nd, 1936. The sexiest thing in Thomaston, said the kilted man. Wide stripes of black and white, ways above. Seals bark, caught in Walker's eye. Pincushion island, trees above boulders. Apron of seaweed, yellow ochre, writer's cabin, tilts. You look out, up, stuck, light a cigar from the block of imperfect ones, and the painting opens up. You credit the cigar, smoke, aboriginal, upside down V, spear point, sudden dazzle, off incoming tide. Man walking tongue of land. And because he's a Brit, shields come into play. The hand shakes down black lines. I didn't, and then I liked 
my shaky hand. The air, champagne, jet night and moon full, white like a main forehouse, and morning's blue cap, and lower down, the light that is no color but light. Thank you.